Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. So I'm back to working on some paintings of Rigget Galloway cattle. Um, if you remember previously, I did a couple of watercolour studies of Rigget Galloways and these animals are quite distinctive because they've got this continuous white stripe going along the length of their back. A big thank you again to Jeremy from Two Mills for providing the reference photos, much appreciated. So please check out his Instagram and go and give him a follow. Um, so this week, I just wanted to show you a couple of the studies that I've done since the last video. So here's a brown calf with some white patches and we've got the white stripe again. And with this one, you can see I've made the background vertical stripes, colors which are roughly reminiscent of a landscape. And the idea is that the vertical stripes contrast with the direction of the horizontal stripes here. And then with the uni pen marker pen, which I'll be using again today, I'll show you that in a moment. I've just put in a loose indication uh, of a landscape. Then the next one is uh, another scene. We've got two, well, th sorry, three cattle, uh, two grazing away. And uh, I've deliberately left this one on the left. Uh, less resolved so that it's you know, the focus is on these two and then we've got a loose background treatment there as well uh, again the kind of reddish brown with the white stripe down the back and then here we've got an adult cow and a calf a little bit more abstraction of the background with this one stronger application of the watercolor paint and uh, today what I'm going to do is work on doing some watercolor on this drawing. So I've done this with one of these uni pen marker pens, um, and they come in a range of nib sizes, and uh, they also come in a brush tip as well. So it's black ink and um, water resistant ink as well. So it's very good for line and wash. This is mixed media paper I'm using here, A4 in size. Um, so there's the marker pen. That's a brush one. And then today I've got my little watercolor kit as usual, but I'm going to be using a water brush. So if you haven't seen these before, the basic idea is the, the handle of the brush is hollow. Uh, that's a reservoir of water. And then by pushing this little button on the handle, you can increase the flow of water to the bristles. So it's just a slightly different way to apply watercolor. So I'm going to begin by grabbing a bit of cadmium yellow. And I quite like the uh, abstracted background on the last sketch that I showed you. So I'm going to do something similar for this one. So as you can see, I'm applying the paint uh, very loosely. And I've got two diagonal stripes there and then two diagonals going the other way there. We'll put a couple of vertical patches of paint in up here. And then perhaps over on the right, couple of hor more horizontal patches. You know, obviously I'm not being too precise here. And then I'm going to grab some of this light green I've got on the palette and make the wash a little more fluid. Blend that into the patches of yellow that I've put down.
and we'll continue with that just to kill the white of the paper. So I'm going to let that dry completely now. OK, well, the background's pretty dry. Um, a little bit of the green has wandered onto the, the, uh, the animal's leg there. Not too concerned about that because uh, this is a mostly quite dark coloured animal. So I think I'll be able to cover that up fairly easily. So I'm just going to grab a couple of the reds and a bit of this orange. And we've got a lovely reddish brown on the ears and uh, below the jaw here. But I'm actually going to come in with this reddish orange to begin with. OK, so... pushing the brush against the bristle so that I get the odd little frayed edge so the brush marks aren't too tidy. I'll add some of that orange up on the ears as well. And then that's probably all the only places I can kind of get away with that. So. We'll come back in and get a bit of burnt sienna. A little bit of raw umber. And while the paint's still fairly wet, I'll put some of that in on top. Not with a view to covering things completely, but um, Just to get a bit of mixing going on. And I'm trying to be fairly aware, I'm just going to lift off a little bit of that paint, having said that, fairly aware of keeping certain areas light, you know, especially where uh, the white hair is. So can I use that colour anywhere else? Not really, I don't think. So let's go a little bit darker again. We'll get a bit of burnt umber. And we'll mix that into the same colour. And uh, we can put some of that ju just fairly loosely within those patches of colour that we put down. And then that can continue just a little bit down there. And we'll perhaps put a little bit on that knee as well. And that's not too bad for that colour, I don't think. Now up here uh, on my lid, I've just got a little touch of tube watercolour. You can see it's a lovely violet colour. This is a Windsor & Newton. This this kit is by Dela Rowney, but um, uh, this is Windsor & Newton uh, watercolour from a tube I'm using now. So I'm just going to put a light wash of that over certain, certain parts of the animal. And one of the things you can do with the uh, the water brush is if you kind of press the button, it doesn't always work, but if you press the button as you apply the paint, you get little bubbles in the paint and it gives quite a nice interesting texture, quite a unique look. I've just realised I could have used a little bit of that lighter orange up on the right hand side of the face, which is why I'm lifting off some of that, or why I just did. Now you may have noticed my background 
doesn't come all the way up to the drawing in places, but that's okay. As is the, the mixing of color I've got going on here. And look at this lovely cauliflower that's happening uh, on the animal side. That's all good stuff as far as I'm concerned for this particular subject. So I'm working with the paper dead flat today. And I think there are advantages to both, really. You know, you've definitely got more control in a way um, when you're working with the paper dead flat. But the paint does have a, more of a tendency to pull which is great if you want cauliflowers and weird effects and things, but you know, going with a vertical or near vertical angles, probably better if you want to avoid that, I would say. So we'll begin to cover that bit of wayward green. Then I'm just going to grab, um, I'm not sure which yellow this is actually, I think that's cad yellow, that's lemon yellow, so I'm not quite sure uh, which one this is, but um, nevertheless it's a fairly bright yellow. I'm just going to mix that in with that pale orangey brown that I had before. And a uh, bit of artistic license, but we'll put some of that in down here. it there. And then again I'm going to let that dry. Well if not completely dry it's pretty close to being dry now so I'm just picking up a little bit of um, ultramarine blue here and I'm going to use that for some of the subtle shadows on the underside of the chest and a little bit on the belly as well. They're probably close to being subdued greens, to be honest with you, but um, I just kind of like the idea of putting the blue in here. So it's always good to stray from re reality a little bit. And then we'll keep going with that blue on some of the areas that I haven't covered that will be darker. and the pure white. Now, when I'm working with the paint in this very fluid way, it's difficult to get it, certainly with this brush at least, exactly matching up with the drawing that I've put down. But that's okay because um, I'm gonna be coming in when everything's dry with uh, the marker pen again. We'll go over the top of the dry paint to add some definition and refine lines and things. So just adding a bit of blue to proceedings there. And then having done that, I'm going to go back to the, the violet, but I'm going to pick up a bit of what I think is Payne's Grey and mix that in just to make it a bit more of a neutral colour. And then hopefully this is going to add some, so perhaps a bit more of the grey. So, yeah, the colours I've put down so far are very vibrant, and I definitely want some of those to show through. But um, I want to just knock back the intensity of some of those colours and bring it just a little bit closer to reality on the whole. But um, 
I do I do enjoy my vibrant colours in my paintings, so So I'm trying to let the watercolour do the work as much as possible. Definitely being guided by the reference. But, um, you know, if the paint wanders in a certain way, then in general that's going to be okay. So even though there's a lot of intricacy within the texture of the thing we're painting here, I'm still generally looking at the big shapes of tone and then just trying to capture the general direction in which the hair is falling. And then, you know, we can put a few squiggles in as well. I mean, I've got some of them drawn in already but uh, and a lot of the, those marks will be lost you know as the paint dries and moves around a bit but a little bit of it will be retained now going a bit darker here because there's quite deep shadow in places just um, forward of the hip on the underside of the belly there bring a bit more of the purple in as we come down this way just being careful not to veer too far into those white patches But let's cover up that uh, bit of green. And once again, going to let that dry. All right, well, now the paint is dry, I can come back in with the 0.3 nib Unipen marker. And I can enhance some of the lines that I've already got and I can add extra texture and shading and shadows, contours, wherever I feel it's appropriate. Now again, there's no need to aim to replicate, you know, every single hair. But by adding little curved lines like that, we can capture something of the surface of the hair. And then we can stylize things a bit if we want to. So for example, on the edge of the ear here, I've just added a couple of stray hairs and we'll put a couple more on. And, you know, you don't want to go too crazy with it, but it just adds a little bit more character, I feel, to the drawing.
So I'm actually going to deviate from the photo a little bit and just make this right hand eye a little darker. I might even add a bit of paint to that in a moment. We'll, we'll see how that goes. And then equally, having said we can enhance certain areas, you know, there are other bits that you might want to leave, you know, very close to as they are. So, for example, in this pale area here, I really quite like the transition from purple to white to the blue as it is. I do want to add something to the edges, but inside that area, I think I'm just going to leave it as it is. So we'll just, I think that works quite nicely. But then maybe as I move down the leg, we'll add a little more here. Just improve the structure of what's going on there a little bit. And then we can start to put a few blades of grass in. And then where we've got an edge, where the, the two, that green wash and the yellow wash have combined, you know, we can make use of that and just kind of enhance it. And then we'll pick up this one over here and do something similar. You know, you don't have to follow the whole thing. But when you get a little cauliflower, it's often going to replicate a hedge or something quite well, really. Um, then we can look around the rest of the drawing. So for this leg, fairly happy with the way that bit's turned out. I definitely want to add a little bit of structure. I think I might go to a slightly thicker pen, actually. One second. Yes, yeah, so I've switched to the 0.5 nib now. That's working a little bit better. And, you know, I want to just add a little more definition to the bottom of the belly there. Put a little bit of shading in here. And then the other main areas really that need um, work are just along the back here. I want to make sure that we've got a nice, clean, um, clear line to distinguish that back from the background, basically. So I'll, I'll just do that. I'll just pop that in now and then come back to you in just a second. So you can see I've added in um, these thicker lines. And if we look close, some of the early drawing lines are still showing and they're not uh, coincident with the, the newer line. And that's absolutely fine with me. I've also just circled a couple of little stray patches of purple paint with the pen. I feel it adds a little, I don't know, just a little sense of movement to the drawing. So, um, you know, it's, I like stylizing things basically a little bit and just deviating from reality and making the drawing its own thing. So uh, then in addition to that, I just want to pick out some of the boundaries between these darker and lighter washes and use those to, you know, incorporate a few of the hairy squiggle lines that I use. And also, you know, enhance some of the earlier lines that have got uh, a little bit subdued when I added the paint. And then perhaps just a couple of those circles. There aren't stray, um, there aren't stray dots of paint here, but I quite like just adding a few little circles. I also, uh, off camera, I just enhanced some of the the wash lines here in the background as well. But I think just adding a few little circles like that. I don't know. It brings, you know, perhaps their flower heads or something. Well, I just finished painting the rig at Galloway and I thought, well, I've got quite a lot of this violet on my palette left. And I was down at Sidmouth again recently. 
and um, you know took a quick shot of the seafront and I thought well it's a good opportunity to switch to some A2 mixed media paper and a big mop brush get the paper vertical this time and uh, we'll just do a quick study using You have to excuse the fireworks that are going off. It's uh, Halloween here tomorrow. And although fireworks aren't traditional in the UK for Halloween, uh, we tend to do them on Bonfire Night or Guy Fawkes Night, which is November the 5th. That's obviously fairly close. Um, but in recent years, uh, you know, people just do their own thing, really. So, <laughs> so that's why the fireworks are going off. So uh, anyway just banging in a quick sky with the pure violet and then I'm going to switch to that brown that I mixed up before but mix the bit of oh sorry I didn't realize I was, I was off camera but everything I've done so far is the pure violet um, so I've just mixed in a little bit of that brown I used for the uh, cow uh, with what was left on my brush and we'll, we'll put in um, a bit of a distant cliff top so this is going to be a you know, very simple treatment. And let's get a little bit more water. I mean, there's not much pigment left but for the distant cliff. We'll let some of that purple of the sky, from that little bead, bleed into the cliff there. And then I've got a little horizontal bead of paint there, which was a happy accident. It wasn't really intentional, but you know, it kind of worked out quite nicely. I think we'll keep that there. And then for for the beach, uh, I'm going to take some of the yellow ochre, some of the burnt sienna, some of the orange, and we'll just kind of sweep in a beach fairly quickly there. And again, dilute the paint further. And just hint at the more distant uh, sands over there. Now we've got a bit of a run there but I think I'm going to keep that for the moment and then let's add just a little bit more of the orange to that mixture and then the the, the walkway along the seafront it's kind of a you know pinkish orangish orangish part to the paving there so I'm just going to put in strip of that going off into the distance. And the sea on this particular day it doesn't show up in the photograph too much but it was fairly red actually so I'm just going to grab what looks to be a bit of cad red and we'll try and just move the brush very quickly so we get some speckles of white in between the uh, the brush strokes I've got quite a few cauliflowers in the sky I now realize which rather goes against what I said for the previous painting but, but I don't mind them for the, uh, you know, for the sky. Uh, and then let's go back to our uh, violet and we'll put in the beginnings of some people. So I've got this chap on the left.
And then we've got this other guy who's holding a cup of coffee or something. And so you can see I'm taking a very, very loose approach with this, this uh, initial stage. And there's somebody else with a coffee here who's actually wearing a lighter top. Um, but for now, that'll do. We'll give them heads. And um, got rather too much water on my palette, but uh, we'll make it work. Still going with the pure violet. in some shadows and then for this first wash the question is is there anything else that I want to do I don't think there is for the moment oh I've just noticed that bead of watercolor that I had along there look how that's bloomed up and created that wonderful uh, cauliflower along there that's that's great that's really working quite nicely so I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll come back and modify it further well, that first application of paint is pretty much dry. We've got uh, more cauliflowers here than you get at the local supermarket, quite frankly, but we'll try and make it, you know, make them into something. So, um, but the next thing I want to do is work on these three figures with the 0.5 millimeter nib unipin marker that I used for the cow earlier. And what I want to do here is enhance what I've got, but not completely. Uh, not completely obscure it. So the light is coming in from the left. So with that in mind, we'll try and keep the majority of the marks I make on the right hand side, but obviously with something like sunglasses. Um, they've got to go on the left. But uh, so what I'm trying to do is I draw this chap in is is not only look at line but also look at shapes as well including shapes I've already got naturally within the watercolor and really I, I want to do you know close to the minimal amount of drawing I can You know, do I even need to include a foot? I guess I do. I guess I need to put some evidence of something there. So his head's looking at perhaps a little bit small. So let's just uh, give him a bit more hair than he's actually got. But I think, I think I'm going to leave him like that. Now over to the next guy. He's got a beard, so we'll, we'll make use of that. And some kind of collar here. And I quite like the way he's you know, hanging on to his uh, mug there. So there's the top of the mug. And we're not going to get into drawing fingers or anything, but there's his hand. And there's the back of his hand. So, so fingers and then back of hand there. another arm and hand. Now I've kind of I'm running out of space for his legs so we're going to have to correct that. Um, so let's just lengthen that a bit. And then the lady to the right So she's wearing sunglasses as well. So we'll put those in. Give her a slightly different hairstyle compared to the one she's got. She's wearing a bag. Uh, she's got a cup of coffee or something as well. I don't think I'm going to bother including that. So I'm going to leave those three for the moment. The 
metal railings that are going down here in the reference I'm going to ignore. Um, I think I want to put some of the buildings in next. So I've got, I deliberately kind of let this wash follow that general direction to allow me to put some buildings in if necessary. I'm not sure I'm going to copy exactly the buildings we've got here, but I'll put a couple of, um, put a couple of lines in. So maybe that's the part of a roof coming in there. Then we've got another roof here. Um, so let's put, let's just put a vertical in there. Perhaps a little bit of one there as well. And then a horizontal line in there. So I've got another roof here. And perhaps that's all I'll do for that. And then we'll indicate, so we've got sort of another kind of roof shape, another roof shape, and we've got some squiggles over here. So let's perhaps make a little couple of buildings there. So, you know, I'm deviating massively really from the from the reference, but that's, you know, that's kind of the point sometimes. Um, and then what can we do? Let's pick up the edge of that wash. Just a couple of little perspective lines there. And then a couple more that way. And then for the water, uh, I think just, yeah, not too much, but just Just some indication of the water lapping in there. I'm not sure I want to do any more with that. Okay, well, I've switched to a flat brush now and I've just grabbed some of that violet that I used for the very first wash and that I used on the cow as well. And uh, I'm going to put some of that down completely or almost undiluted. So I'm getting some quite nice textures as I work the, the paint over to the left here. Um, so quite happy for that. And then that's going to allow me to extend the leg down a little further. Let's just get a touch of water on the brush here. And put in some evidence of a foot. Bit of shadow there. And then we'll, we can move on to the middle guy. him some kind of jacket. Put this leg in shadow. Again, extend that leg down lower than I had it. And then uh, for the lady, let's darken her scarf or whatever it is, put the, uh, the bag in place. Um, perhaps ought to give her an indication of an arm at least. I don't want to go into too much detail with her, but then we'll also just darken her. legs as well. And then we can enhance the shadows a little bit, the cast shadows, without going too crazy, but just to make, just to anchor them really to the, anchor these people to the floor. And then we can look and see, well, where else can I use this same color in the foreground? So um, 
And that is a good question. I'm just pondering that. Um, so I think what I will do, oh, I'll just put too much water on my brush one, one second. Um, th we've got the sand here kind of sweeping down in a bank as it comes into the redder sand. It's not purple, but it's a lot closer to purple than it is to the colour I've got here. So I think I'm just going to sweep down some dry brush marks here just, just to... So if we go quick like this and crisscross the, the marks a bit, we get some nice texture. Use the brush edge on. And that kind of brings the foreground forward a little bit, I feel. And then I can use some of this same colour. The water lapping in. Again, not, you know, not worrying about copying the marks I had before. And then we've got rocks and things here. But I don't know that I want to include them in my painting. So I'm going to just dilute or you know, grab some water and go back to a much more dilute wash now and come in and put a few little windows and things on these buildings. I mean, they're not really even buildings, are they? They're just sort of hints of buildings. And if we go more dilute again, it's still the same colour. I can colour in the end of that building, off in the distance. And its neighbour. And then... Just a few lines of confusion really off in the distance, in this kind of middle distance there. So we've created a nice little environment there, I think, uh, on that side. And then perhaps these cauliflowers are trees gr growing up behind the buildings. And then I don't think I am going to include the railings, but I, I am going to kind of put something Perhaps there's a fence going down or a set of railings or something going down the beach out that, out that way. And I think I'm going to leave that little watercolour sketch there for now. But I just wanted to demonstrate, you know, sometimes I think it's a really cool thing to take what you've got left over on the palette and just be inspired by those colour choices that are more or less random because you don't know what you're going to have left at the end of a painting and then see what you can make of it. And I don't know if I'm going to do any more to this little thing in the in the future or not, but it's I've really enjoyed putting this little seascape or seafront sketch together. And I think the right hand side of the painting works better than the left on the whole. But nevertheless, wouldn't have created it if I hadn't done the little cattle painting. So let me just show you that finished cattle painting, the um, the Riggett Galloway. And uh, that'll be it for this week's show. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show.